All right, let's get some audio checks. Check one, two. How's this coming in, loud and clear? How's your guys' picture? Everything good? Make sure nothing's broken before we get started here. They're waiting for the green light here. Have my finger on the timer button. It'll reset back to the normal time once we get us all set. Excellent. And before we get too far into the action, I want to let you guys know that this round is brought to you, the top four and the final are brought to you by Curled Paw Creatives, the leader in the leader, sorry, words, I am really tired. Uh, leader in third party acrylic tokens and templates. We'll come back and talk more about that later. Let's get back to the action. All right, they've started the timer. So we're gonna get dials moving here in a moment. <laughs> They're always there, yep. All, right, all of day one's games are <coughs> officially on YouTube. They were processing last night before I went to bed, so I couldn't uh, couldn't quite get them up. But anyway, let's get into the action here. We got Phil Booth, um, a Phoenix, Arizona local, playing against Steven Gonzalez, a Minoc out of California. Um, Steven wanted to say a shout out to his Minoc brethren for hit the support, and of course, D. Yoon, his brother in arms. And Phil Booth, uh, Playing again, shout out to his squadron, his friends, and uh, to his IGs. As you did see, he tried to put them in the dice box there. <laughs> so... We will find out in this first turn who has initiative uh, as soon as we see which PS11 does move first. This Lothal does have engine upgrade, so Fenrau is able to use the coordinate action in order to, um, in order to give initiative. Excuse me, in order to give uh, coordinate a boost. So it looks like, if I'm not mistaken, that Fenral moved last. So let's get that uh, initiative token to fill up. <coughs> oh, be nice in the chat. Be nice to each other. <laughs> So we're getting dial set in the second round here. Um, before we go too far, let's get our predictions. Give me a one if you think Philip Booth is going to take this home, and give me a two if you think Stephen Gonzalez will be able to bring it home for the Minox. How is this going to go down? Give me your predictions now. One for Philip and two for Stephen. Calculating. So 
So Dash is racking up those focus tokens on Ray. Now, interesting thing about these type of engagements, right? Dash likes to stay at range two to three. So does this ghost in order to um, use its its quad TLT. But at the same time, it can leverage its five dice uh, range one shot if he can get into the bubble. So he reaches for a target lock. Looks like he might be just out. And here is Fen. I do find it interesting seeing Fen so far behind uh, with the ghost moving so fast, but as long as he's, he's within range one to two, he's always close enough to uh, to do something, be able to coordinate. So he, he saw from the target lock that the ghost is just out. Philip did not boost. So the decision here is do you, like what do you do? Thank you to 2112PJM for becoming a Twitch Prime subscriber. You guys are awesome. So we're coordinating an action. For a target lock. So we got no range to dash. And this will be a critical decision because if he boosts, he's going to be in range of both Dash and Poe. And the Ghost has zero agility. He does not want to do that. Don't want to trade those shots. And he's going to be boosting away. This gives him his TL shot, TLT shots at Poe. Oh. Gives him the TLTs on the ghost. <coughs> Excuse me. And out of range of Poe. And the ghost will be able to do a hard two next turn and present his rear. <laughs> um, if he wants to, or be able to go towards Poe. Whichever one he wants. So, we got range two. It is out of arc, so auto thrusters are active. Um, for Poe, Poe does two hits. Spends the evade, takes one shield on the Lothal. It's fine, just put him in the box. So he's going to take one. He already hit this turn, so he can use Maul to take a stress to re-roll one of the dice. And he can Ezra for a crit. There's two evades there, so it only takes one damage. We get to the end of round TLTs here pretty soon. There you go. And that'll hit. Uh, that won't hit. He doesn't want to be stressed with the Lothal. That's why he didn't maul there. Anything out the box is a reroll. And wow, Poe only takes one shield in that engagement, which nets to a zero, most likely. So I think with that turn of events, you probably, man, do you hard to the ghost away? But then you're in a corner for Dash.
right, we're waiting for dials here. So what do you guys think? Does Let's get some guesses here. Does the ghost go to the right or to the left here? What would you do? What would Twitch chat? What would Twitch chat do? <laughs> WWTCD. <laughs> Looks like everybody wants to go to the left. A couple people want to go to the top. K, K turn for the trolls. <laughs> Deploy Phantom. That is not the time to do that. <laughs> So I think his best bet in order to reunite um, Fen Rao with the ghost is going to be to go two to the left. Um, though, you know, these are, these are high-level players. They've played a lot of games. Is that too obvious? We'll find out. Let's see. Because sometimes the obvious move is the right move. So there you go. Back gun is active. He goes, here, you want to fly this way, Poe? You're going to take it. And we're evading for an action. Dash four straight. That's still out of range. He can barrel roll into range three, I believe. But he's going to focus, just keep charging that up on Ray. He's going to be needing those barrel rolls later. Poe's going to be regening and boosting to get out of range. And also, he has regen back up to full. And we will have a bit of a reset, basically, um, with the only trade being the one shield on the ghost. <laughs> Dash's ability is always on. <laughs> We're just out for a coordinate. Focus because you can, and we're is just out. Yep, only fifteen more. <laughs> All right, so we got the ghost dialed down. Ghost probably is going to be. Man, Fen is kind of in an awkward spot. Probably a two. And the angle's a little weird. I wonder if the two hard to the right fits for Fen, but he wants to stay a little bit closer to the to the ghost here. I'm fairly certain the 5K doesn't fit for for the Lothal. So one bank. Looks like he's just gonna give he's giving the Sheath Beat some time. And he's regrouping, which is smart. You wanna make sure that Sheath of Pete Fen Rao is uh within range two in order to uh use that coordinate action and also to leverage that arc. And his ability is so good. It's like, hey, you can't spend tokens on this attack. That's great. And with Fenral's ability, um, taking the stress, the R2 Astromech gives him a couple more green maneuvers on that's too hard, which really helps.
Dash barrel rolls into range. He's probably going to be in range three of the of the Lothal. It is behind a rock. All right, the barrel roll is complete. And now we wait for Pope. Pose full. There you go. He's going to start making some aggressive maneuvers, especially with uh, Steven in the corner here. Though the Ghost does have engine upgrades, so it can get out pretty quickly. All right, so Fenral's ability is active. Dash will not be able to uh, use any of his abilities, excuse me, any of his uh, focus or target locks on this turn. Focus is for defense. And Dash drops a focus off of Ray. And range three shot on dash. That's hit crit. And one gets through. Uh, Lone Wolf is off. So one shield. First blood on uh, Phil's list drawn by Fen Rao. I don't have my protector, but I can still deal some damage. All right, here's HLC against... Something, they didn't quite point it out, so we're not sure. Focus was stripped, so there's no no damage there. Spend the focus, he's fine. So this is exact, man, this is a good engagement for Steven. He's able to probably push in some damage here onto, uh, onto dash two. It is obstructed, Lone Wolf is off, that's three hits. He's gotta roll natties, not there. Dash takes another shield. It hit already. He can m stress for the re-roll for one of them. And you Ezra, that's going to be three hits. He has to roll three natties again. Not going to happen. Down to three shields. The stress comes off because of the attack hit from the mall. That's the ability on there. Here's the second volley and the round. He's going to take the stress for the re-roll. He's betting on a good roll. Uh, but he's stressed, so Ezra switches it to a crit. He needs two. He only gets one. That's another shield down. He's still stressed, so he's unable to maul this one, but he doesn't need it. He gets three again. All four of those TLTs hit, and uh, I think Dash is out of shields. That engagement was really rough for Philip. Um, the fact that that was just in range um, of the Ghost hurt him a lot. Um, that Poe being just barely in range two, turned off Lone Wolf, hot shot co-pilot able to take away that focus from Dash. Um, that alone was the difference between taking a damage there. So we're looking for uh, to see what the engagement here, the three bank most likely fits on um, on the ghosts to be able to get past the sheathapede and nice casual uh, one forward keeps that arc active for Fen Rao. It can coordinate uh, any token that the the ghost needs. I mean, right now the ghost is in um, in a good spot um, stats wise, and Steven I believe is in the lead. So to look at some, some strategies that Philip might be thinking about here, using block, uh, Dash as a blocker here or purposely trying to run into um, the ghost in spots where he can't boost, like uh, blocking him at angles in which he can't boost out and force him at the edge of the board, will give time for Poe to come in and start dealing some damage. Um,
<laughs> I like the uh, the Minoc trolling there from uh, coming from uh, Rash Rashta. That's funny. So right now the burden of burden of execution is definitely on Philip. Um, I don't know if there's a maneuver that he can do to get him out of range. I mean, I think the best one might be a hard one in barrel roll if he wants to reset and come in with Poe. Um, but I think you get more in Poe's way than anything. Hey. The hard two to the left does not fit. But here's the three bank I talked about earlier. Nick in the bank. He's clear. Now we wait. So dropping the evade token. He's got plenty of offensive modifiers here. That evade is just for to conserve the life. You're giving him, giving him an extra shield every time. All right, there's a two turn. So he's definitely gonna be in range for TLTs. Um, I think even if he barrel rolls, he's dropping the focus. Probably gonna try to keep Poe not in range two, uh, even though I think that still might be in range two. It's close. And here's Fenn. Yep, there's the one forward. It's like I'm inside of Steven's mind. He has Dash in the arc. He's going to be able to take that focus, or at least one of them. Uh, Ray gives him the second focus, but then he can just use Fenn's ability to shut him down if he sh who, with whoever he shoots. Um, so we're going to expect that here. Um, we, we won't be at any regionals in California. Um, we might go to the system open. That's our, our possible California trip. Uh, still trying to work out finances for that one to see if we can make it work. It's just California is expensive. So, <laughs> um, it's a lot plus the, the con costs and all that. We have to weigh, um, you know, attendance versus cost. So we're trying to figure that out, but. Uh, let's focus here on the Arizona System Open. We got a, we had started with 182 players, 182 players. We are boosting with a coordinate action. This, uh, what this does here is, if Dash had lived that turn, um, the boost there makes it so that Dash can't. Uh, get into a blocking position. Here is the Ray focus. Yes, I will be at this Portland system open. That has been scheduled, booked, and ready to go. All right. This was Fenn. Two eyeballs. And he's debating whether to use his ability. He is locking out the focus on the attack for Dash because he's activated.
Here's four dice. And that's, focus can't be used, so it's gonna be three hits. Not sure what ship it is. Looks like it's going in on Fen, and he's just gonna be taking a shield. And now it's uh, it's going to be the Lothal's turn. All right, so he's going to leave it for two. Spends the focus, so no damage on that one. Here's the next TLT. It's two. And that's going to hit. So Dash loses another one. We're going to be getting the end of the round TLTs here pretty soon. This will be mauling that. And Ezra for three. Uh, Lone Wolf is off, so that's going to be another damage. He's sitting at three hole. Here comes the, the next one. Uh, the attack did hit. And that one does no damage. Yeah, I, Nick Bond, I have no idea why your welcome got moderated. It came up. I was like, what? What just happened? It's on auto moderate right now. <laughs> it said, allow or deny. I was like, allow? <laughs> All right. So we're looking at the board state here. Uh, Fen most likely does a two heart here um, to the right. It's really his only option. The Lothal will most likely be doing a two hard as well. Uh, but Fen might be hung out to dry this turn. If he's going to be doing, take some damage, this is going to be the turn. You're right. He did, uh, he did miss the, uh, the Ezra trigger there. He can do that when he was stressed. Didn't he roll in the first one? Oh wait, no, 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 that was from the that was from the first TLT volley. Looking over here, uh, just over my shoulder as they set dials. Oh. not sure how the action is going over there. I see kind of a, an obstructed view, so I'll see if somebody can get me get me that information. Here's a hard two from Steven. Baiting in action. He does have engine upgrade if he wants it. And he is going to be leveraging it. He's boosting towards Poe. Here's Dash, still in range of TLTs. He's gonna have to barrel roll up and out if he wants a chance. Um, but he does. if he does that, he most likely is gonna not have a shot on Fen. Here comes Poe, he's like, all right, I gotta start dealing some damage. Joe! Sideline reporter Joe Desmond giving me an update on the other, other, uh, other game. So Poe is boosting. He's like, all right, you know what? It's time to take out this Fen. 
He's got to use the gun. He has a focus from advanced optics, so he does have modifications. Maul can only remove one stress, yes. Here's the hard two because uh, R2 Astromech, it is a green maneuver. So he's going to have range three shots f coming in from both Dash and Poe. What am I sharing? Care to share. Oh, these are oh, these are okay. I see here. So update here on D and Don's game. Uh, Chopper has five shields. All his hull. Fen has four hole left. Don, the all his boats are alive, and the aggressor is dead. Seems like D might be slightly on top there. One aggressor down. Oh, we're checking range here. Whether it's obstructed or not. Looks like it's not obstructed. Here comes Poe into Fen. Okay, so that's going to be two. He's debating whether to spend the focus. Who's going to spend it to take one? So he's at three hole there. And there comes the focus. The other list, uh, here comes HLCs, two hits coming into Fenral, and that's n he natties out of that. Fenral lives, and here comes the ghost. Four TLT attacks coming in, uh, probably on dash. There it is. Uh, Dash does have one focus left. Lone Wolf is off. First volley. Um, it's two. He doesn't really want them all two dice or any of those hits. Uh, that's going to hit. Dash is down to two. Here's the next volley. Two hits. Three rolls. Hit crit. Takes stress from Maul. It's going to come off because of the second one. And that's going to hit. Here's the uh, second volley. And Ezra for three. And Dash has been taken out. He hits on the other one, and it is gone. So Dash has been taken off the table. It's Poe against the world now. Um, probably expecting this Lothal here to too hard through the rock and just start bearing down on Poe. Fen can just continuously take away um, that focus token for defense, but I expect here uh, Phillips going to have to start doing some, some offense here. So we will be getting updates uh, from the other game uh, periodically. And now we got Poe versus the world with R2-D2 regen if Philip is really patient. He still has 41 minutes. He might be able to eat away at the ghost, though his positioning isn't great. Uh, the ghost will be able to bear down on him and uh, start leveraging those TLTs. And even with auto thrusters and, and hocus pocus, um, if... Steven starts doing three hits every time. Um, you know, can't can't avoid that. Philip wants to avoid taking more than two damage a turn. Um, no, uh, he will take the stress, which is fine for him. Um, from the debris, no damage. Here's a two forward. 
Here comes Poe. He's definitely going to get a shot, I think, no matter what. The three bank doesn't fit. The two hard doesn't fit. Here's the two. It clears. And there's a focus. Here comes, f here's Fen, range one. He is debating whether to spend the focus or not. He does. Two evades. Poe loses his focus. Wait a minute. Yeah, they shot out of order. I was, I was confused. <laughs> so they're just redoing that. So yeah, Poe goes first. Uses Poe's ability. I was looking at my, my initiative thing saying, wait, what? what what just happened? And here's on the defense, spends it. He will be taking a crit here. What is the crit card? It is a double damage, I think. So I think Fen is living on one. Uh, Steven did miss the trigger for Fenral's ability. And here's TLT's into Poe. He's stressed. That's three hits. That's going to be taking a shield. Here comes the second volley. One, uh, auto thrusters. But the attack hit, so Maul removes the stress from the last turn. Maul is open to be used again. He's going to be taking a stress, most likely to reroll that dice he doesn't he takes another damage one shield and the first one hit so it's kind of a free maul reroll that's going to be Ezra to a crit there we go all right And one shield on Poe. So Poe took two damage that turn, and this is the kind of thing where, where Philip can mitigate one of those each turn with regen. But with the fact that Poe is the only one left alive, um, Philip is going to kind of be forced into not sticking to greens. I mean, the, the T70 does have good greens. <coughs> he doesn't have any turns. He is going to have to K-turn here. And Fen Rao is most likely just going to end up doing a one bank to the left and just keeping that arc back there, taking away that focus token every time, locking it out. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to see the ghost dive in here. Here's the one bank. He doesn't want to go too far. He'll boost with Fenral if need be. He does have that open. Uh, if he wants to use it, there's the evade. Conserve that health. And there is the three turn. Philip does not like being in that corner. But he's still going to get an unobstructed shot here um, if, if, well, it depends on what maneuver he did here. We'll see if he'll be able to actually coordinate a boost. All right, so he won't be able to coordinate a boost because Fen's in the way. But um, the Lothal is still going to get TLT attacks. It might, man, you know, it might be unobstructed. Does the boost fit? It does not. So that they... Oh, they're going to check it. It's going to be close.
All right, the, the boost fits. Here it comes. Unobstructed shots on Poe. Poe does not have a focus. Um, he did not do any green maneuvers, so he doesn't regen any shields. And... So D's Ghost is down the three hole and Harpoon. Don has a lot of shields on the rows, which is double stress from Tactician. Full health on Don's other ships. Fen's list, uh, Fen list the shield earlier, but it's fine otherwise. Wow, that's the update on the other game. Thank you, Ian Hamp. All right, here it comes. We're re-rolling two for the primary, and that's Ezra, one of those to a crit. He's using that primary gun. Uh, that's going to be hit, hit, crit, and that crit's going to go through. There's no integrated astromech here, so you can't do anything about that. He's going to be sitting at one hole. First TLT attack, one goes to two. He has to roll natties here, and that's going to be the game. So now, um, wow, that was... An exciting game here. So it comes down to Steven being able to use his TLTs and use Fen Rao uh, in arc. I think that one turn where Dash got stuck, where he was just outside of, uh, just inside of range two for no Lone Wolf, uh, was able to get, what was that, three or four damage in that turn, and that really was the downhill for, for Dash. Um, this round was sponsored by Curl Paw Creatives. So is our final. Here is just a small sampling of some of the awesome things that they have. Uh, they have been a big supporter of the show uh, and has shown their support by by uh, by sponsoring the finals, the top four. Uh, for this one, the uh, San Antonio System Open, and I want to say a huge thank you. Visit curlpawcreatives.com. Check out their awesome templates and swag. I want to show you guys here. They actually make custom templates as well. So if, let's say you want to make some for your squadron, um, Curl Paul actually makes our Gold Squadron podcast templates. So if you have a design in mind, uh, Andrew is also a graphic designer. So I gave him the idea, like I said, hey, this is what I want. Can you make it happen? And he was able to put these, oh, let's show this here. Uh, where's my favorite one? It's this one right here. There it is. So we took some cool art here. This is from the front of a Y-Wing. This is the lines off of Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. And then the, the targeting computer off of a tie. And then our, and our logo there. And just uh, putting that art together, he does great work. All kinds of different tokens. So huge thank you to Crowpaw Creatives. But uh, I also want to say huge thank you to our patrons. They're the ones that make this happen. And if you want to become part of that, uh, that group of people, you can visit patreon.com slash gold squadron or the other option is uh, or and if you have Amazon Prime and you haven't done this yet, you can actually connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account and you get one free Amazon uh, Amazon Prime, Twitch Prime subscriptions, what they call it. Uh, you can become a Prime subscriber of our channel and it tosses a couple bucks our way and it costs you nothing. It's just part of your Amazon Prime um, subscription that you pay for already uh, once a year and uh, you get a gumboat emoji that's so that's fun so throwing throwing free money that all it costs you is a couple minutes and um, and you get a cool emoji we'll be swapping them out once in a while but it's not, lots of fun oh thank you so much to our couple of friends here this looks like Machik 242 and MDT MD towel thank you for becoming uh, twitch prime uh, gumboats are on that other top four table, we're going to be getting some updates here. Um, I'm going to go walk over, and I'll be back with our, uh, our update on the other top four game.